He's got a big guitar and big hair, and he's coming on next. Here comes Brian May, New Horizons. Brian May CBE is busier than ever. There's music, there's astrophysics and astronomy, his 3D book company, and a hit film that's up for some awards. Brian May is here. Oh, you know Tim, of course, over there. Now, the very start of this year saw Brian release his first solo single in 20 years, which we've just played. It's called New Horizons, and it combines his two greatest passions, music and astronomy, and was co-written with Don Black. So tell me how that came about. It's different, isn't it? Yeah, where the hell did that come from? I know. <laughs> I've been friendly with these NASA guys for quite a while. They came to the point where they said, well, how about if you do some music for us? And this was Alan Stern, who's the head of the New Horizons mission. And in case you don't know what New Horizons is, it's the fastest thing ever launched from this planet. At about 30,000 miles per hour, it sped past the planet Pluto and took this amazing set of pictures of it. For the first time ever, we saw what Pluto looked like. So I was there with them, and I got invited back to see the next part of the adventure, which was that they carried on, and 4.2 billion miles away they rendezvoused with another object which is called a Kuiper Belt object and did the same thing they did a flyby he said can you write a song about this particular part of the adventure they've called it Ultima Thule and I went what the hell rhymes with Ultima Thule how can I write a song about this <laughs> but then I thought well what's going on here is man's incredible curiosity the same thing which powers explorers in the Victorian age is powering us now to find out what is out there. And strangely enough, I came across a little quote from Stephen Hawking yeah. where he says, we explore because we need to know. And I thought, well, this kind of defines what I'm talking about. So I wrote this song about human endeavor and curiosity and the spirit of exploration, which is called New Horizons. Now, you, I know, have been interested in astrophysics. In fact, you have a PhD in astrophysics. This is your field of interest. And to that end, yeah. there are are two books to mention which we might need the special glasses for which are in the back of the book mission moon 3d reliving the great space race done by yourself and david j eicher indeed okay so what's in there bearing in mind this is sound only so yes, uh, it's yeah. hard to explain stereoscopic photography on the radio, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? No, yeah. <laughs> Basically, it's looking back at the Apollo missions, uh, and it's the 50th anniversary of the first moment when man walked on the moon. This is the first time there's been a book illustrated with 3D photography. Now, the astronauts were trained to take 3D pictures by going click, and moving a few inches to the right and going click again. Mostly they forgot... <laughs> There's too much going on. They were busy. But what happens is you get a lot of accidental stereoscopic pictures because people actually do take pictures on the run. So what we did, me and my colleagues, we went back into the NASA archives and dredged all through everything and chose things which could be made into 3D pictures. Now, what's 3D you're saying? Well, it's the same as Avatar. You've seen it in the movies. Mm. 3D photography for me has always been magic, and I always wanted to have the ability to bring it to the 21st century. It is like magic in a sense, because it gives a sense of realism. You're not expecting it. totally does, yeah. And I see it, you know, I take the book to people and they go, what's this then? Why is there two pictures here? What's this viewer? When they look through and they go, well, and they go, oh! Now I see it, you know, yeah. that eureka moment, that wow moment. So that's what we offer now. I am now the London Stereoscopic Company, and we issue books which have 3D pictures in them. And the way the book unfolds is interesting because it's each mission and tracking back the history of the earlier missions right up to the, yes. the later missions. Um, what do you make of the way it's all turned out? I mean, they stopped the Apollo, they cut the money, and now, of course, private companies... Where are we at with it, do you think, space <laughs> exploration? It's a very interesting question, yeah. Space exploration has transferred into unmanned missions. All these NASA missions at the moment are robotic and controlled from Earth, like the New Horizons mission, like the Rosetta mission to the comet recently. Obviously, men haven't walked on the moon in 50 years, which is incredible. No, but probably. there is an interest lacking, I think, because of the lack of person mm. spaceflight. Is there any uh, prospect of that happening? They talk about going to Mars, don't they? Yeah, they do, and um, there is a commitment. I don't know how far it's going to go. You can go to Mars. Can you, you come you back? back? You can get back. Personally, probably I would wouldn't, although I did spoof it on Patrick Moore's Sky at Night. <laughs> <laughs> Got covered in dust. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We, Years ago. We miss him, don't we? We miss Patrick. Oh, my goodness. Very. Tell you who we like. Uh, we like have Maggie. Enough. Maggie yeah. Pocock, yeah. Indeed, yeah. yeah. She's fantastic. Anyway, Brian, we're going to come back in just a second. Don't go away, Brian May. Is here. Now, we're back with Brian May, who's here talking about a couple of his new 3D books. And just before the music... We were discussing Mission Moon 3D. Uh, let's move on, Brian, uh, to the other book, if we may. Uh, it's called Queen in 3D, 
And basically, it does for Queen what you're doing for space, I suppose. It does. I turned my stereoscopic eye in a different direction. And being a geek as I am, I always carried a stereoscopic camera all through those Queen glory days. Did you? Yes. And so the pictures that you see are kind of candid in a way which a paparazzi never could achieve. It's just bright. Don't let's pose around. Let's just be normal. So you get some lovely pictures of Freddie in there and Roger and John fooling around. Also, what I would do was I would give my stereo camera to some guy and say, see what you can get of us live on stage. Yeah. So there's a lot of live pictures of yeah. us on stage as well. Is it in sequence or is it just throw stuff when you found it? It is pretty much in sequence, yeah. I didn't plan it. I didn't think this book would ever come to fruition. I didn't realise I had the amount of material that I ended up. But my partner in crime, Denis Pellerin, in stereoscopy, went through my entire house and he found so much material which I'd squirrelled away. <laughs> we realised we had actually too much material for the book. So there it is. We've spoken in the past about uh, Queen, obviously and we've spoken also about the movie. Yes. Um, and congratulations. OK, what have we got? Best Motion Picture, uh, the Golden Globes, nominated for seven BAFTAs, five Oscars. Did you kind of expect all of that would happen? No, we had no Genuinely? idea. Genuinely? No, no. I mean, you never know, do you? And it's new territory for us. We've made music for films before, but we've never actually produced a film. Having said that, we didn't make the movie. You know, Fox made the movie and whatever. But we were kind of the uncles, I suppose, because we nurtured this idea idea for 10 years. From what I can tell, that's quite a normal thing in movies. You're walking on a tightrope. But what developed with the team was this incredible feeling of loyalty and momentum and belief in the project. Is it fair? Is the movie a fair depiction of how it was? We believe it is, yeah. I discovered on the journey the difference between a documentary and a biopic. I didn't know that before. It was halfway through the 11th script. We realised what it was. It's about trying to figure out what drove Freddy, what inspired him, where his passion came from, where his fears were, where his weaknesses and his strengths were, and to explore his relationship with the world, and particularly with music and with us, who were his family. Yeah. So it's a big kind of remit to take on. And it's no longer a documentary. It's a biopic. It's an attempt to portray a person's spirit. So and some things have to be condensed and, and yeah, combined. And it has to be, yeah. About the portrayal of yourself in this film? Yeah, I was very nervous. Roger and I were both nervous because you think people are going to believe this. They're going to think this is exactly what happened and this is going to become us. And then once I met Gwill, I mean, Gwillem Lee portrays me in the film and he's phenomenal. He is, yeah. I mean, he's exactly like you. Yeah, but if you meet him in real life, of course he's not. He's that he good came an actor. In the show. I mean, he fooled my kids. <laughs> if you can do it, yeah, my kids saw the. All three of my kids saw the trailers when they, and they said, oh, he's really good. Obviously, he must have done his voice, Dad, right? And I went, no, he is an actor and he's that good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, here's the thing, though, Brian. I mean, Queen are still an entity. You go to and fro, don't you, really? Mm. Um, who comes to see you? Is it people that, <laughs> from the old days, you know, because you do new stuff now? It's very mixed. Yeah, we have a lot of people from the old days, and they're still with us, which is wonderful. I think what this film has showed up from the response, that we get to a new generation every time we go out, which yeah. is incredible. I don't know how we got that lucky, to be honest. Obviously, I do Instagram and Twitter and everything these days, and it's become a big part of our lives. And I get so many letters from 16-year-olds or whatever saying, we've discovered this and we love it, and we want to play guitar and all this kind of stuff. It's wonderful to see that it crosses every generation. <laughs> All right, let's recap what we've done, everyone. OK. Uh, <clears throat> Brian May's single, New Horizons, is available uh, for download right now. And his stereoscopic books, Mission Moon 3D and Queen in 3D, are also out now. And if I could just describe them, I mean, this is kind of coffee table size, uh, beautifully photographed. I mean, this is ideal for me. I love Queen and I love space. I'm in heaven. <laughs> You're my pal. And I love you. <laughs> and I love you. Brian May, everybody. <laughs> We're all loved up. We're all loved up there, haven't we? Thank you, Brian. Thank See you next time. Bless you. Thank you.